tell, give me a little bit of an idea. Tell me a little well, bit about her. Well, from the very beginning, I'd like to say that she was sort of our miracle baby because my mother was 44 when she had my sister. And there's 12 years difference in our ages. So she had tried all those years to have children with no success, even tried to adopt. And so when my sister came along, she was just the world and all to us. And she was a beautiful little girl and healthy and all the things you are concerned about. And as a child, she was the happiest little girl you'd ever want to meet. As a matter of fact, my mother even asked the doctor if there was something wrong with her because she didn't cry. And she was just very, very sweet from the very, very beginning. And um, we I didn't see her all that much because I had a busy schedule sure. but all the time we had together we did dolls and dress up and she was very very feminine and I was the tomboy so she was a totally new experience for me she was my little doll and my little you know plaything. It, it was so much fun and my mother just adored her as she grew up uh, my mother and my sister were soulmates. You know, the singing, the fashion, the decorating, all of those things, you know, the dolls that my mother kept encouraging me to play with that I just never could get into. So, you know, my mother and my sister had a very, very special relationship that way. And teen years, and she was a very popular kid. I mean, it's I, like think she was so. I think so. I think so. My sister was seven when we got married, and she was, <clears throat> excuse me, she was the flower girl in our wedding. Um, you know, from then on, once we were married, uh, we saw her less frequently. Sure. Sure. But she was, I think she was popular, and she was very involved in all things music and choir and so forth. I know she took school fairly seriously, and uh, she had not a huge number of close friends, but those she had were very, very dear to her. And we, I got that sense from her. And whenever we saw each other, you know, we had a good time. Never a quarrel, never a disagreement, never a discouraging word ever. It was just, just very special. Um, I'm, I'm guessing that in December 1979, um, at some point, your your phone rang on the 19th or the 20th, and and somebody made a call to you guys. Yep. Can you can you tell me? John took the phone call. Can you tell me what you guys remember uh, of that? John took the call. It was about seven o'clock. Actually, it was probably even earlier than that. My mother had had a horrible, horrible night. She had already been to the morgue. She had to identify my sister's yeah. body she, she in called, the body bag. She called about 7. She didn't want to okay. wake us. Okay, 7. And, and she just said, Michelle's been murdered. I thought she was choking. I, I, I couldn't imagine what was wrong. She couldn't breathe, and somehow she told me. Yeah, and so, you know, we had a, our oldest son who was four and a half at that time. Um, you know, we just packed up everything and we took off 90 minutes, whatever it was, to, from Davenport to Cedar Rapids. Uh, and no, you, you went separately. I took Robert up to uh, Clinton. You? My okay. sister was living in Clinton at the oh, time, okay. so I took, I took our... To See, I don't even remember. I can't imagine I drove that. But and Mother met me at the door and she just said, Michelle's been murdered. And that is very surreal, that you just cannot comprehend that. Um, you don't even know where to begin to ask a, a question. Just you just sheer emotion. Just shot, I mean, you, you yeah. said, I thought she was kidding. I mean, just, yeah. I thought just she was choking. Just complete shot. Yeah. yeah. Just, this no, does not compute. This does not compute. Uh, you know, normally when you have something like this, you understand car accidents. You understand, you know, if you're into illicit activities or if you lead a lifestyle that is on the edge. I mean, she was the everyday average high school girl, you know, getting ready for Christmas. And 
you don't get murdered. You, that just does not happen, especially in Cedar Rapids at that time. This was not something that you see in the newspaper often. You know, we were not um, desensitized. John, does um, your memories of, of that day, again, mm -hmm. again, you guys may not have been super close just because of distance, mm -hmm. um, but certainly this this was your, your sister-in-law. Yeah. And I, I mean, how do you deal with that initially when something like that happens? I mean, you, you, you have a background on, mm -hmm. in, in law and you certainly mm -hmm. have been exposed to, to things that, that went on that were yeah. um, uh, at, at times of a horrible nature, but how yeah. do you even deal with that? Very, very difficult. Uh, the hardest thing is the lack of any reason. She wasn't sexually molested. She wasn't robbed. Um, Initially, we thought we knew who did it. I was pretty sure in my own mind who did it. Turned out not to be the case, and I'm very satisfied this person did not do it. But we just wanted to find a reason for this. And, you know, if you're killed in war, if you're killed in an automobile accident, you, you can go back and explain the reason or understand the reason. Here, there just is no reason. I think about what your mom talked about or you told me that your mom talked about the, mm -hmm. the nature of the crime and the violence surprised yeah. her. It was brutal. It was, um, the police said she was stabbed 19 times in the face and the chest with defensive wounds on her hands. I was just reading, you know, before you came and it said it was a brutal struggle, violent struggle in that car. And you, you just don't know the why of it, you know? I thought my mother's comment that they didn't want her money, they didn't want her sexually, they just wanted her life. And that just was not something we could understand. Um, you said that your mom was not totally surprised by no, this. She was not. She had a feeling? Yeah, she had more than a feeling. And it was one of those things that uh, we didn't, she didn't tell us about that right away. It was not the first thing we were discussing at all. But within about two weeks, she said, I was not surprised. Part of the reason that night when my sister did not come home right from first of all, the choir banquet, and then she was doing some last-minute shopping at the Westdale Mall, which she had never been to before. So she had called my mother. She had said, I can't find the store. She was going to put a down payment or a payment on this uh, coat that she was getting for, as a graduation gift and a Christmas gift. She couldn't find it. My mother knew she had a test the next day, and right away when my sister did not come home, she knew exactly what happened because she had had a dream that, and there was a newspaper and it said, Michelle was murdered. And, this and my mother had had a little bit of a history of that sort of thing. When her, she was living in Chicago as a young woman and her father back in, in um, Dubuque, Dubuque uh, died, she saw him in her room so she was a little bit different that way. And so for her to say, I knew that Michelle was dead and that was why she was frantic already by 10.30 at night calling friends. Where's, you know, did you see Michelle? Uh, calling the police even earlier than what was reported. And they said, well, she's 18, you know, she's been gone for a couple of days. Of course, the, the normal reaction. But my mother knew this was not normal. As you said, she, this wasn't the first time that she had had thoughts like this that, no. and turned out to be, to right. be the case. You guys have funeral services. You lay your sister to rest. Mm -hmm. And then you wait. Yeah. Uh, how frustrating. I mean, you, did you 
Was did it sound like the police were almost certain that this was something they'd wrap up quickly, that you would have an answer to, or what was the impression you guys got at the time? I'm not sure we had an impression, but I, I had sort of tunnel vision about who it was, so I thought, you know, surely they would wrap it up, and that he would, he's, he, you know, 90% or more of murders are committed by people who know the victim, and we thought, well, you know, A, B, C, you know, put it all together and you got the guy. But um, it, w it did not come to pass, and thank goodness uh, uh, this person was not uh, the murderer. But, you know, that creates its own frustration because now, well, who could it be, you know? So we, we give the, cr the police all the credit in the world because they have, they have done a tremendous job trying to solve this from every imaginable uh, angle, including hiring a, um, a psychic, a, a psychic to, to come up with uh, uh, an idea, and, they, and, and that didn't work. So, yeah, give them credit. So, so there was a kid she hadn't heard from in, right. in, in a while, and suddenly they get a phone call. They get a call, and, and uh, they said that they ha he has a Christmas gift for her which was just totally uh, not appropriate. Uh, so that was why, under those circumstances, we thought there was something strange with that new connection, which hadn't come up. But he has had his, the police have DNA, and he was tested, and a friend of his who was with him you know, during that time and who came to the funeral, and everything was just... Fine. Well, the, it the, was, but that was unusually strange. That and 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 by an amazing coincidence, he was at Westdale Mall that night and ran into her in the hallway, and they had words. Why do you think this has been so hard to solve? Why 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 do you think there was not a, a quick solution? Have you have you had any thoughts about that? Well, there was no evidence in the car. There were no fingerprints. There was, there was none of this person's blood in the car, but there was a tiny spatter outside. And I, I can talk more about that, but um, the police have a theory that I don't think they've ever put to rest, which is that this was a vagabond uh, serial killer. And they have done a great amount of work using national databases, looking for DNA, prison systems, that sort of mm -hmm. thing, and have come up empty-handed. Mm -hmm. So, but on the other hand, because of the viciousness, they, it seemed very personal. Yeah, right. A, a woman hater. Well, um, and initially, even even thoughts that it might be a woman, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that was my thought, and I I think it's just because I didn't consider my sister a really strong person. She was more of the ballerina type. And for some man to take that long to subdue her and kill her uh, just didn't seem to make sense. Um, I would think most men would be able to kill her in you know, just one or two stabs. And uh, again, realizing the age difference, I'm, I'm I'm guessing there were never things that she confided in you in terms of uh, boy trouble or, or girl trouble or jealousy no. or, or anything like that. It wouldn't no. come up in normal conversations mm -hmm. in the time that you guys spent together. No. Yeah. And, no. Your, and your mom never never made any comments that, that even as close as they were that she had heard anything like that. No. They d she did have problems with girls, I will say for sure. You and did, did too, Janelle. But anyway, uh, <laughs> pretty girls always have problems with girls. And and some of it, yeah, no. was um, probably a little over the top. Uh, there are also issues that we were told of, of people going to the grave afterward. And who were we told by the caretakers? And they were girls, mm -hmm. you know. So and my parents. I mean, many years after this, we get a call. Is Michelle there at Christmas time? 
Can I talk to Michelle? Well, she's, Michelle's dead. Ha, 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 ha. You know, that kind of thing. So, yes, they definitely had problems with girls. And that just added to why I thought it could have been a girl. But the DNA is very clear. It's a man. That it's a man. Yeah. That is responsible. Um, I can't imagine losing my sister. She's five years older than me. But I especially can't imagine losing her under such violent circumstances. Um, how, how has this impacted your life? I mean, we're 35 years after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, I, and I have to believe that um, while you may not think of her every day, that there, there probably aren't too many days that go by before you do. How has this impacted your life? Well, it really impacted my parents' life, and, and as a result, ours as well. Christmas, of course, was just a horror for years and years. And my parents uh, were very sweet about it. They realized we had children, and we were trying not to turn it into a, a horrible time of year. Yeah. But it impacted me because I watched my parents. My, my mother just didn't go out of the house anymore, didn't want to talk to people, terribly depressed, uh, could barely watch the news or the newspaper. My father wound up having a stroke and had to quit work early. Um, and then she took care of him. Their lives were destroyed. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. And, you know, when, I, when people say, oh, you know, you're having family for Christmas or whatever, and you have sisters or brothers, and I say, I used to. I used to. <laughs> but it's, it's not about me. It's, it, it's, I really think that people need an ending to this. So many people have worked so hard on this. And even from what I understand, people who have retired from the force still continue to work on this. It's just one of those things that if somebody knows anything about this, there's, it's never too late to give this information out. Um, and I do think that somebody has information I don't think it's one of those, but I think it's our only hope at this point. I think the police have done all that they can do. I think they have the information to tie it down in place, but what they don't have is just a few missing pieces that, that's, that's my hope, is that somebody will still, and I know that plea has gone out in every newspaper article and forever, but it's still important.